So which two positions am I buying in June in the financial sector? Stay tuned and I'll tell you. In my efforts to build a dividend portfolio, I wanted to stay diversified across all the different sectors and there's 11 sectors. And in this video, I'm gonna do a deep dive into the financials sector and I'm gonna sell off about six of my positions and buy into two. So which two positions am I buying in June in the financial sector? Stay tuned and I'll tell you. Welcome to the channel. My name is Paris Clough and this is Financial Self-Reliance. I absolutely love helping people manage, protect, and grow their money. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to grow your money through dividend investing and how to really focus in on some good, solid, strong positions in each of the sectors so that you have a good, strong portfolio that's properly diversified. So let's take a look at the financial sector of my portfolio. So this is the original spreadsheet that I created to track my portfolio. I now use a couple other things to track my portfolio, which I'm gonna share with you throughout this video. But I wanted you to see the original spreadsheet that I still keep updated so that I keep track because it kind of helps me keep track of what's going on. So as you can see over here to the right, it's this is the financial sector. I have um, currently, well, I'm gonna talk about the nine shares that, uh, the nine positions that I once owned. I now only have three left of these particular positions and because I sold off six of them and I bought in on three. Well, I, I bought in on two of them and I'm keeping one just in case because I'm not quite sure about what to do with it. Maybe uh, you can help me in the comments below what you would do with this position as I get to it. So the first position that I wanted to start with here is Prudential. And uh, before I get into that though, I wanted to share with you the new software that I use to track my portfolio. It's called the Dividend Tracker. There's a link in the description below for you to try it out. There's a free version and a paid for version. The paid for version gives you a lot more resources for research and other things but the uh, free version is still pretty good. So if you sign up for it, that'll be great. Use the, use the link in the description below. So let's take a look at the first one with Prudential. Prudential is, in the, is a fantastic company. They got a great yield. Um, they're at 4.76% yield, a 64 per, uh, dividend grade out of 100, which means that they're probably one of the premier top companies to be involved in. I have a goal though with my dividend shares to be able to build my shares to 100 as fast, fast as possible because at 100 shares of a position, I can start doing covered costs. Calls. And covered calls will give me premium to be able to fund m more fully my other um, positions that I want to get. So I actually sold, I only had three shares of Prudential. I sold those three to be able to get enough money to get to 100 shares of the one of the positions that I stayed in and that I bought more of. It's actually listed as, as a strong buy on Seeking Alpha and we'll get to that. But I wanted to get to 100 shares so I could start running those options. Once you start running options, you can start earning premiums. And once you have those premiums coming in, you can use those premiums to buy more shares. And so I'm definitely keeping Prudential on my watch list and it's gonna stay there until I have enough sh um, shares of the other ones that I'm looking at to run those options with. And then this one is gonna be uh, one I'll start buying again. Uh, so just take a look, taking a look here at uh, Prudential on Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha is another place. I actually paid for the premium service at Seeking Alpha. Alpha and they're a fantastic uh, service. They got a lot of great uh, ratings and information and just research, good solid research here. So over here on the ratings, it says that uh, Prudential is a hold under quant ratings. Wall Street says it's a hold and the SA authors, which is seeking alpha contributing authors get to rate their stocks and they say it's a buy. So I basically decided to sell it off so that I can get some capital to raise enough money to be able to get to hundred shares of another position. But this is a great company. They got great ratings. Let me show you through the dividends here. They have a B plus dividend safety. They have a 4.56 yield, 33% rate payout ratio, 10% five-year growth rate, and they've been paying dividends for eight years. And so this is a great one. This is the, one of the top ones I'm gonna have on my watch list after I get to 100 shares of the other ones that I have ahead of this. But Prudential is definitely one of those ones that uh, you wanna have in your portfolio if you don't already have it. Do you have Prudential on your watch list? Let me know, or if you have it in your portfolio, let me know in the comments. The next one here is ARI, ticker symbol ARI, and this is a Apollo. They have a 21 out of 100. Uh, this is commercial real estate company. They, um, on uh, Seeking Alpha, they're a hold, and then Quant Ratings has not covered. And Quant Ratings, they don't cover, um, I think this is the one, yeah, this is the one where it's a real estate investment trust but it's through mortgage companies. It's a mortgage company, real estate investment trust, and um, Seeking Alpha doesn't register those on their quant ratings. So we, I don't know if it's a hold on quant ratings as well, but it's definitely a hold at Wall Street and a hold at uh, Seeking, Seeking Alpha uh, contributing authors. So I decided to sell it. It's got, um, if you wanna purchase it, here's the, the statistics. 
11% uh, yield, which is fantastic. Payout ratio, ratio is over 100%, which is a little bit nervous, uh, makes me nervous. A five-year growth rate's not that great, and it's got a zero dividend growth. So that's another reason these statistics, although the dividend yield is fantastic, I mean, who doesn't want to have an 11% yield? Yeah, the other, the other statistics here kind of give me that idea that um, I probably ought to pass on it. That's where I was telling you about earlier in the video that I bought things based on the yield. If you buy based on yield, you're going to find yourself in a position where you're probably going to wish you didn't do that. So don't buy things just on the yield. Do Look at some of the other statistics, some of the other things that are going on with it, some of the other ratings. Do some, uh, do, you know, take a look at the financials, other different things that you can look at to see what's, uh, what's good or what's not good about it. Okay, the next one is GAIN or Gladstone Investment Corp. This one is a monthly payer. I really like the monthly payers because you get that, that monthly income. This has a 41 out of 100 dividend grade. Um, over here on Seeking Alpha, it um, has a D plus dividend safety. It's a 5.91% dividend yield, which is fantastic. The payout ratio is 193%, which is pretty, pretty, you know, it's a lot. It's way more, you, you want to be under 100% because this means they're paying out a little bit more than they're taking. There's, they're paying out a lot more than they're taking in. Uh, growth rate is 0.3. As long as it's above zero, that's actually good. But 0.38, there's better ones out there. If you're going to invest in uh, monthly payers, there's better ones out there to put your money into. One-year dividend growth is okay. Uh, I prefer to have more than that because that shows a track record of consistently increasing your dividends and you want to have those good track rec records. So the next one here is Annaly Capital, ticker symbol NLY. Ticker symbol NLY has a great, um, also has a really great dividend yield. Uh, they're 49 out of 100 on their um, on the dividend grade. And let's see what Seeking Alpha has to say. Seeking Alpha puts them as um, they don't have any dividend safety score, dividend growth, dividend yield, or dividend consistency score, which is kind of makes me nervous. Um, but they have a 13% dividend yield, which is fantastic. Payout ratio is 78%. Uh, we're kind of getting into some bad things here with the payout, with the growth rate, but um, these other statistics look really good. The fact that they're paying out less than they're, they're bringing in um, means that they've got a good cash flow and that they're going to be they're going to be able to sustain that over long term. Um, it's a very low cost to get into it. It's only trading right now for six sixty five six dollars and sixty five cents. So it's it's a low cost to get into. Uh, but the quant ratings have it over here as hold hold and then not covered. So I don't you know I want to be able to purchase stocks at this age or at this stage of the game. I'm young enough that I should be looking at the yield, but I also have enough time to be able to really focusing in on the growth as well. So if you're in your 30s or your 40s or even in your mid your early 50s, you should not just be looking at yield, you should be looking at also the growth potential of the stock so that you can get take act, take advantage of the growth. If you're headed towards the later end of your 50s, maybe the early part of your 60s, the growth stocks aren't going to be your focus or they shouldn't be. Uh, I wouldn't recommend them to be. I would say that you're probably going to start shifting over from those growth stocks into the more higher yield dividend stocks so that you can be ready for that 65 or whenever you're going to retire and you're going to be able to take your portfolio from a growth portfolio into an income producing portfolio. All right, the next one here is Maine. Maine is another one that uh, you know a lot of people talk about. It's really good. I like it because it's a monthly payer. 31 out of 100 dividend grade. It's not that great in terms of uh, how it's looking right now, but um, let's see what, main, what uh, Seeking Alpha has to say. Seeking Alpha says that the quant rating says it's a hold. The authors say it's a buy and Wall Street says it's a hold. $38 right now. Let's just take a look at the dividends. So the dividend safety is a C, growth is an A, yield is an A, dividend consistency is a C plus. So it's got good dividend, strong strong dividend scores there. 6.81% uh, yield, 89%, uh, almost 90% payout ratio, 1.7 growth rate, but no uh, years of dividend growth. So this is a really good one to have. Maine is gonna stay on my watch list. I actually sold Maine so that I could purchase more shares of a different uh, stock that I really felt good about and I'll share with you why in just a minute but uh, Maine is going to stay on my watch list so let's add that over here right now so that it stays there. All right the next one here is IVR Invesco Mortgage Capital and for many of you you're probably wondering why I still have this stock. I, I do too. This one was doing well it was okay but look at this dividend score seven. It's it's lost 50 or more percent of its value that's the thing is, even if you have a great dividend yield, if you're losing value and the dividend yield isn't making up the difference, you're, you're going backwards. And so the dividend yield does play a part, but 
you also have to have that growth if you're losing value every year. And part of the reason why the dividend yields percentage increases is because the yield is a percentage of the value of the stock based on how much they're paying out. So the fact that they're continuing to pay out the same amount, even though your value is going down is good, but dang it, you know, who wants to lose half their value of their stock for that kind of money? There's other better, in my opinion, in my opinion, there's better stocks and better things to put your money into. And so over here on Seeking Alpha, it's the authors, the ratings say hold for the authors. Wall Street says sell. And I'm sure the quant rating would say something similar to either sell or hold as well. So I actually sold the IVR, got out of it, even though it's got a 20% yield, 85% payout ratio. Look at that, negative 25% five-year growth rate. That's what I'm talking about. You don't wanna have the growth rate be less than the dividend yield, because then you're, you're going backwards. You're, it's not breaking even. That makes sense. So I sold IVR, by the way. So this one here is New Mountain Financial Corp NMFC. This is a 27 out of 100 on the dividend uh, score, or the dividend grade. But when you come over here to Seeking Alpha, Seeking Alpha has this as a strong buy. 4.77 out of five on the strong buy, because that means that the potential for growth is there, the potential for everything moving forward, looking forward, every all of the statistics that the company has are looking good as a strong buy. So New Mountain Financial is one that I, you know, even though it's got a dividend safety of D plus, almost all the financial sectors are in the D or C minus D range. There's not a lot of really good uh, dividend safety in the financial sector right now because a lot of them are, they're just making their, they're just doing their best to stay afloat. But um, for some reason, NMFC has got a strong buy on the quant rating and so I went ahead and purchased some more of this. I purchased 10 shares of NMFC, and um, this is not the one though that I bought uh, and I made, uh, I got to 100 shares of though. So I, I have 15 total shares in NMFC right now. So that's the one. The next one I wanna take a look at is AGNC. Now AGNC is one that I, monthly payer, I like the monthly payers. I've had this one for a long time. It's given a great dividend yield. It's an eight out of 100 though, so it's not looking very good. Uh, over here on Seeking Alpha, it says that it's a hold buy. And then the quant rating says not covered. I'm I'm holding on to AGNC right now. I don't necessarily know if I'll sell it. I probably will, but I'm holding on to it right now just to see, because um, I don't know. It's it's inexpensive. It's got a great uh, yield and it's got a decent track record. I've had it for a long time, but this five-year growth rate is not very good. It's better than the d dividend yield, so I'm actually uh, still uh, moving forward. But I'm definitely not um, gonna. I'm really considering whether or not I should sell AGNC which I probably will. The last stock I wanna share with you before I um, get into my what I've earned so far this month, in the month of May, um, for my dividends is Prospect Capital Corp, or PSEC. This one's got a 33 out of 100. Um, it's got a great dividend. It's a dividend is 9.25. It's got a D in dividend safety, A minus in dividend growth, dividend yields A plus, and dividend consistency is B minus. Five-year growth rate is negative six, so it's on discount right now, I would say. It's definitely paying a lot more than the, the growth rate in the dividend. The payout ratio is great. And this one comes in, Wall Street says it's a sell, but the quant rating says it's a strong buy. I tend to trust the quant rating because Seeking Alpha has done pretty good. At, it has a great historical track record of making good choices on what to buy. The authors at Seeking Alpha say it's a strong buy, five out of five. Um, with uh, Seeking Alpha authors, 4.82 out of five on quant. Uh, I actually got myself to 100 shares of this position, so I bought 90 shares of PSEC with all the money. After selling all of my positions, I bought 10 shares of NMFC, and I bought 90 shares of PSEC. I really like it because one, it's a strong buy on the quant ratings. It's $7.74. I could get to 100 shares quickly. That way I can start running those uh, calls, covered calls making some extra money on those premiums that I can now reinvest back into this sector so that I can then use that money to purchase some of these other um, ones that are on my watch list. All right, so let's take a look at my income for my dividends in the month of May. And this chart shows the dividends for month of May 2022, which is the green chart here. I did go down from April quite a bit, but I still had a great uh, month as you can see, I'm right in there. Um, my goal is to have $100 a month as my average. How much money did I make in the month of May? Let's take a look at that. And I'll, let me zoom in here for you to see that and come over here. So in the month of May, 2022, I had $85.21 come in. So not my best month, but it's the second, uh, it's not my lowest month either for the year so far. So that's really good, $85.21. Last year in June, I made $75 almost. And so I'm wondering what I'll make this year in June. What do you think I'll make in June? 
Put your guesses in the comments below. What do you think I'll make in the month of June for my dividends in my Weeble portfolio? I hope you got a lot out of this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it helps you get to the point where you can feel confident about picking and choosing the right positions to be in in each of the sectors as you build your dividend portfolio. If you missed the last video I produced, you can find it here. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel up here. And if you want to watch the next video that YouTube thinks you might like, go ahead and check that one up here. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.